But first, let's look what exactly are MDNs. Okay, so what they are is a type of neural density estimator. Neural density estimator is, again, you plug some data into it and it gives you a distribution over that data. Okay, so let's say you have data X's and Y's, you plug in the X's and it gives you the distribution of Y given a certain X. Specifically in MDNs, the distribution you get in the end is a Gaussian mixture model. So it's a mixture of Gaussians. Yeah, and you plug in and the X and you get both the mixing coefficients, the, the means of each Gaussians and the variance of each Gaussians. So suppose we only have a mixture of two, you will only get the mixing coefficient uh, alpha one and alpha two, and they have to sum up to one, right? Because it's, let's say 0 0.7 to being in this Gaussian and 0 0.3 to be in this Gaussian. You will have two means. They are unconstrained. They can be between minus infinity to infinity. And you have two variances. And variances, they have to be uh, positive. So in order for the neural network to uh, give you legitimate values, what you do is you take the values, let's say, of the final linear layer, and for the alphas, for the mixing uh, coefficients, you use a softmax layer. And uh, for the mu's, you just leave it as it is. They are unconstrained. And for the sigmas, you use uh, exponential uh, of the, the, the final linear layer. And that promises you that the, after that, the value that you will get is uh, positive. And then once you get that, you say Y distributes Gaussian mixture model. So some mixing coefficients time some Gaussian. And you train this whole thing by maximizing the log likelihood of Y, okay? Or minimizing the negative log likelihood. So if you have the log likelihood, then this is what you have over all your data and you maximize it with regards to the weights of the neural network. Yeah, there are some parameters here. We call them W for weights. And you maximize the weights using gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent. Or if you look at the error, then you minimize the error. It doesn't matter. In our case, the Ys are the thetas, right? So we don't have X and Ys, we have X and theta. You plug in the x's and the thetas, uh, the neural network with the current weights gives you some GMM. You calculate the probability of theta uh, in that GMM. You get some value. You sum it up over all the uh, data points that you use in that batch. And then you differentiate and you improve uh, in the next round. OK, so this is a view of how the entire algorithm looks like. And so finally, you do this, you train this over the simulated values, yeah, over the thetas that you simulated and the x simulated that they generated. And finally, you plug in the x observed after you finish training, uh, and you get the true posterior. You get p theta given x observed, given the actual x that you observed and not some simulated x, which is what you want. So let's see the development that we had here. So in the beginning, we had linear uh, regression, right? The regression adjustment using just linear regression, weighted linear regression. And so if this is x and this is theta, you get some, if you have this kind of structure that is linear, then what you can do is you can adjust all these points to the baseline. Yeah, you can take all these points and move them here, and you can take all these points and move them here. And this gives you a more accurate distribution over theta given that given that the actual distance between the x sim and x observed is zero. Okay, and then we move to nonlinear regression. And now we can have all kinds of nonlinear functions of the mean. So here we, we have something that is the sinus, yeah, that looks like this. And here we have x uh, cubed, I think, something like this. And the variance is heteroscedastic. So here you can see that we have a lot of variance, but here not so much. A lot of variance, less variance. A lot of variance, less variance. Yeah, so the variance doesn't have to stay the same. Here also, here we have a lot of variance. It goes down very low here, and then it starts to go up again. Okay, so this is what we have with the second regression adjustment, which was nonlinear and used neural networks. Now, what we have is that it doesn't even have to be 
one function. It can be many, many functions. So you can have maybe this function over here and 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 this function over here. And the mixing coefficients, so we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We have five different functions here. So five components in the GMM and the mixing coefficients will say how much uh, weight we will give to each Gaussian. So for example, for this Gaussian, for this uh, Gaussian, let's call it the first Gaussian, here for that X, we will give all the uh, probability to it. So alpha here will be one for it and zero for the rest. Whereas let's say here, alpha will have some distribution. It will give some to it, some to this one, let's call it the third, yeah? Uh, and some to this one, the second, yeah? So there will be some distribution between the different Gaussians, some mixing between the Gaussians. And here the, the variance stays the same for all of them, but over here, we have these two different functions, yeah? x squared and minus x squared. Well, here, the variance can also change. You know, Here, it can be bigger, and then it becomes smaller, 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 smaller. And it, here, it can be the opposite, smaller, 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 becomes bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah? So we see with MDNs, we get much, much more uh, flexibility to express all kinds of different structures that might uh, exist between x and theta, right? 